about it. All right. Okay, we are live. Let us do this. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to Legends of Hash 3, Hash Church 4.0, Episode 8. It's been ages since I've done a Hash Church episode. Just got some folks coming in right now, figuring out their logistics with their audio and their video and whatnot. And uh, man, super stoked to be here today. Super stoked to talk to all the winners from Legends of Hash uh, number three in Los Angeles. Obviously, I think if you got to go to Legends of Hash, you actually were a winner. But there was another level of winning, which were the people who really shined, who brought the hashes that really, you know, moved people, whether it was through their olfactory, through that numbness of the brain and body, all the beautiful flavors that showed up. We had people come from all over America and absolutely represent Oklahoma fucking represented, let me tell you. We'll be talking about that here in a little bit. And uh, I'm just super excited. Now, unfortunately, right now, um, Addison is not feeling very well. He might not actually make it. We were close to canceling for a second time in a row. And I just, uh, I wasn't having it. So uh, we're going to continue on the way we are. And I want to just welcome everyone. So far, we only have a few folks into the room. But welcome, guys. Like, holy shit, Legends of Hash representing winners hell yeah what up <laughs> yeah dudes you guys you guys fucking crushed it man you guys want to introduce Thanks. yourself and tell us a little bit about uh about your journey that that brought you to legends of hash 3 in los angeles to to crush mode so hard man uh well i'm chris this is dan uh yeah we're Ooh, gunk. The yeah. Papa Burger. Oh, the yeah. Papa Burger. Yeah. Uh, Let's start off with something proper this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. man, I wish I had some of that. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah. So we're from Oklahoma, and uh, we are skunk, and we're a legal hash maker here in in the state, almost licensed, and uh, been doing this for since 2019, since mm -hmm. it started, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess we just, I don't know. It's <laughs> just been a crazy journey, man. Um, I don't know. I learned a long time ago. Oh. Did, the... did, it, did you say 2019 is when you started? Uh, that's when we started in Oklahoma, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah as far yeah. as, because that's pretty much when it, uh, right after it went legal, like the beginning of 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, we were living in Colorado, and we've we've lived here before and we have family here and uh so as soon as they legalized we wanted to be in the legal market and so we made the jump and started skunk yeah <laughs> started making wow. hash in 20 was it 20, 2018? 2018 the end of 2018 yeah. is when we started making hash so what turned well, you guys well, on to making hash like what were you guys were just like we should just start making hash uh well, i mean I, I mean originally it was a long time ago we learned how to make bubble hash but then it was like we did, we're doing the B, we were dabbling in the BHO for a while, but the BHO, I just, uh, it's, it was like a hard thing to be able to get into like a legal market. And then that's when we found rosin, watched a lot of your episodes on actually how to make, you know, the bubble hash and all that stuff. And it's Wicked. just been, it's been crazy ever since. And I mean, we used to pretty much strictly just grow for like flour, but ever like we pretty much have only switched over to rosin lately. Like all of our flour, everything that we do just strictly goes to rosin. Right. It's well, I mean, listen, it's absolutely top-notch terps, top-notch rosin. I mean, it's it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, so you guys took first and second in rosin, and then you also got a, a, a People's Choice Award, correct? It was, was yeah. it Darby? Yes, yep, sir. Yes, yep. sir. <laughs> yeah, so you guys got the little Darby cup? Uh, so we don't have it yet, and, yet. <laughs> uh, but soon. It's, uh, it might be at the, the P.O. box. I haven't had a chance to check, but if not there, there very soon. And we, we can't wait, man. We're really excited for that. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. No, that's great to see, man. I'm, uh, I just, it brought a smile to my face to see that you guys came so far and, uh, you know, California really, whether people want to admit it or not, it's, it's, it's kind of like the center of the cannabis universe, you know, like everything, if you want to be honest with yourself and you want to see like, and you go back historically, like, obviously I'm talking about our 
sort of history, you know, going back to like the 1960s, the 1970s and on, obviously cannabis and hashish has a much deeper um, history. I mean, even today I'm wearing my classic shirt of these Lebanese women doing dry sifting over a table. This is probably a lot longer ago than 1970. So hashish has a deep and rich history in the world. It goes back hundreds of years, if not a, a thousand plus years. But for our history, you know, for the California part of things, really since like the late 60s, early 70s, they seem to be the first ones to pull the males. They seem to be the first ones to cut the, the flowering period down. They seem to be the first ones to get into oil making and hash making. They be, they just they were the first ones to really take this so absolutely serious and have this infectious love of the plant that I think a lot of that spread out from Cali. I know it spread right up the coast to Vancouver. Uh, we're not too different up here in regards to our love of cannabis and our passion of cannabis. But, you know, I'm sure too, all those packs over the years that got sent out of Cali across the U.S., that's the inspiration, right? Like you're literally inhaling okay. California into your lungs and we get affected by it. And so shout out to California. Um, if you guys want to hear something absolutely fucking batshit crazy, I have never been to California. What? I've, <laughs> I've never I've never been to California, man. I, I tried a bunch of times in the 90s. I bought a bunch of Grateful Dead tickets on mail order and, you know, tried to go across the border and they would just deny me. I ended up giving these Grateful Dead tickets away in the in the forest in British Columbia because I just couldn't get over the border. And it happened time and time again. I remember when Jerry died, I was pretty upset about it because uh, I wanted to see him play in uh, in California, of course, you know, Mountain View or something. What's up, Colin? What's up, bro? Dude, just hey. talking to the Oklahoma boys here, crush mode at the fucking Legends of Hash. I'm sure you guys got to spend time together. Not really, actually. I kind of missed them. I... I was floating around a little bit, but I was just head down trying to get through all the entries to be real, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how everyone it's... else felt, but I tried to float around a little bit, but yo, to be real, it was like first night I was like, I gotta focus on this. And then someone told me like you gotta get in at 8 a.m. I was like, yo, I don't know. <laughs> like, That's how we roll. That's how I we roll. Look at hash, look at hash church today, dude. There's like four of us. It's like 9 a.m. People are like, what time is it at? I'm like, dude, I sent three emails. It's like 9 a.m., bro. Like, totally wake the did. fuck up. What are you smoking over there? And I, I'm not late, so I apologize for that. But uh, but no, it was dope because I I ended up leaving the event around like 10 on the first night and then just going back to my spot and just like focused on everything and just like went through it all to be honest and everyone was like you're crazy why are you going through everything i'm like to be honest like i have to i can't just smell because things that smell great don't necessarily taste great and things that taste great don't necessarily smell great etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think it's important to give every single person that that same moment that you would if it's your own work um sure and it yeah. was you know, it was cool man it was good to go through it all it was a lot of work, but um, it was enjoyable. It was cool. It was good to be in a focus setting for just my, myself because even having like just the open air and then everyone else around me, it was tough to like really get into jars and really appreciate it um, mm -hmm. in the open air. So it was nice to be able to have both. Um, I definitely went back to jars that I had tried outside or, or at the event and then was like, you know, maybe I'll give this a different score. So um, it was cool, man. It was, it was it's a there. unique thing, you know, before Legends happened, there was no events like this. There's so many now, I can't even count them all. But really, when we first started Legends over 20 years ago, you know, the idea of hitting 20 to 30 high end flavors in like a two to four hour period was kind of unheard of. It didn't exist, you know, and I'll tell you, like uh, people yeah. that I know that are as hard of smokers as, as you could be were like finding their levels of, of limitations. I mean, everyone but Skunk Man Sam, because that guy has no limitations whatsoever. He's just a savage maniac. But uh, for the rest of us, you know, I'd be, I find myself paling out, like out in front of the restaurant, just getting some air. 
with some other heavies out, out in front of the restaurant, just, you know, and kind of like looking like, really? Like, are we pushing ourselves that hard? And keep in mind, Skunk Man Sam was dumping like two grams at a time into an Afghan hubbly bubbly that we were lighting with flames coming off of this thing, like a foot and a half each time you lit it. So, you know, you were getting uh, extremely, extremely, extremely high. I had a good question from Stinky Farms in the room for the uh, for the Oki group there. That he wanted to know what medium is your flower grown in? So we use a cocoa, a highly amended cocoa. That's kind of, we kind of try to like build a living soil almost out of a cocoa. And then throughout the life cycle of the plant, we continue to add natural and organic inputs and, as well as microbes uh, to try to keep, since cocoa doesn't really hold on to, to very much of the nutrients. So we like to, but we want to create that rhizosphere and then continue to add to that throughout the life cycle. Dude, I like where you're coming from right now. I really do. That mycorrhizosphere has an intelligence that humans have not yet acquired. This fucking thing knows exactly what the plant needs, when the plant needs it, where the plant needs it, how the plant needs it. And we just have not, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some incredible folks out there that do some incredible work in regards to their you know, feeding of the plant and, and getting the plant up to that level of expression where it can be like a winner of Legends of Hash Papa Burger. It's uh, it's something special for sure. I'm not saying I haven't seen beautiful resin grown in salts. I just, I've seen the nicest resins I've ever seen have been grown in uh, living soil. So I love the idea of building that bridge and being like, well, maybe we can't do the fully, fully, I mean, listen, real fully living soils generally isn't going to be in pots. It's going to be like out in a on a field like where it's actually connected to nature and living but the more we can bring that in to the scenario and uh, you know adding those microbes and and creating that somewhat living soil maybe we could call it somewhat living soil uh, <laughs> it certainly shows in your results because these flavors are they're just man that's almost like Ooh, almost like some some poo poo caca in there. There's some like good. <laughs> there's some goodness in here, man. Little baby turds. Oh, I yeah. think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna wake and bake with some Papa Burger. You know, I haven't touched it yet. It's like yeah. an untouched. Man, I don't um, know how you did that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no i mean just not just being able to not smoke it <laughs> well it's because i'm a macro photographer and what i really wanted to do was i wanted to um i wanted to do some nice photos for the few that i managed to scope but i've just been crushing them out and uh today i figured is a great spot to uh to do some crush mode so i also want to say hi to logan who's uh, in the room torching up his banger don't worry you don't have to say hi back right away brother Logan is an awesome young guy who's just taking it upon himself to take static sifting to the next level, working along with myself with sample filtration and the, uh, the static sifting machine. Logan has some of the most profound uh, static sifting photos of, you know, shit on it, like beautiful resin on his glove. And uh, so thank you for keeping sifting alive, Logan. Uh, and I'm sure Skunk Man Sam thanks you as well. I did invite Skunk Man Sam today, but it was very last minute. So uh We'll see if he's managing to make it. It is about six quarter after six p.m. where he lives in Amsterdam. So hopefully we'll see him later as well. And uh, I see Cache is there as well. I'm not sure who that is exactly. He's got his camera off, but uh, welcome to you as well, fine brother. And uh, hey, yeah. how's it going, guys? It's Sorry, going good, man. Uh, where are you calling from? I am up in the northwest right now. All right, so in my stomping yeah. grounds. Yeah, in your neck of the woods. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Are you just down across the border from me, or? I sure am. Um, um, we're right up here, like in the Seven Lakes area Ooh. of Washington. So we're like, oh, Beautiful. probably an hour away from you. Yeah. Oh man, you know, back in the day, and I don't know how many of you know this. When I first moved here in like '96. I ended up going a couple years later, I was uh, hitchhiking. I wasn't hitchhiking, actually. Sorry, I was driving. I hadn't. This is the last time I've been to America, by the way, 1998. I rented a brand new car, 
I cut my fucking hair. I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get across the border. They had denied me at the border so many times. One time I bought every single ticket to fish tour, summer tour. I bought miracle tickets to give away and I got denied at the border. It was 37 concert tickets, just mine. My buddy also had 37 that all went to shit because we bought them on my credit card and I couldn't even give them away at the box office to people because they needed my credit card to pick them up. So this was my last attempt. I'm like, I'm going to go see Fish at the Gorge. And I drive across the border. I make it mainly because Fish had just played in Vancouver. And I was in a fucking circus of freaks who were crossing the border. And I probably looked the least freaky at the time. And uh, I ended up picking up a couple of hitchhikers. And it was Marble Slinger and Jason Lee, the glass blowers. And uh, these guys ended up living in Bellingham, which was really close to Vancouver. And for many, many years, I had this incredible connection to all these amazing glass blowers that were right in Bellingham. And they would come up over here. And, you know, I saw Slinger the other day. I don't know if you guys know Marble Slinger, the glass blower, but he was writing on the High Times page. Shout out to Bubble Man. He gave me my first oil dab. He gave me my first full melt bubble hash dab. Turned me on to the melts. Like, it was just neat to see that history. And that was all because... I picked him up as a as a young scraggle hitchhiker on his way to to fish tour, which was uh, very close to probably where you're at uh, there, Cache. What uh, company did you represent with at Legends? Cache, you're muted. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we knew this was gonna happen. The mute, yeah, mute. Um, I said it. Uh, you called it. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, our entry. Um, was with uh, papaya guava and there was a little bit of a mix up on our uh the brand name that it appeared so i think i uh, like on the on the media that legends of hashish posted i think it said Danksar, which is one of our teams and then um uh, but down in uh socal uh our team is cache and so that's kind of what the entry was supposed to be under but yeah we do fuck up every once in a while. We're not going to lie. So we're sorry about that. We smoke an enormous amount of hash. And Addison is just also a savage maniac. He is a yes. puffer. This guy fucking smokes. He's not making it up. He's not faking. This is legitimately who he is. So uh, we'll do better next year. That's all we can say. Oh, it's all Let's good. It was uh, It was complicated. That's for sure. Well, shout out to uh, JP Toro for the banger here. About to uh, light up a little Papa Burger. <laughs> Got my... Got my banger basket full and clean with some brand new ISO in here. So that's always nice. It gets pretty yellow. It gets pretty yellow. Shout out to Mothership. I got this this new this new piece here on the rig and it's it's just perfect for this for a sipper like this. Hell yeah, dude. Those guys know what they're doing over there. There's no doubt about it. I did invite Scott and JP and Darby as well. Um, I'm good with this group. If no one else shows up, we'll have a nice couple of hours. We'll puff some bowls. We'll listen to some stories. We'll see where everyone's going. Um, I'm definitely just loving the, um, well, I'm loving the excitement that legends came off of. I mean, we had less than a week of legends being over before Lorenzo from Terps army, shout out to Lorenzo from Terps army, uh, hit us up and was like, why don't we do a Legends in Barcelona this year for Spanibus? And we were like, yeah, why don't we? Like, fuck, I haven't done a Legends of Hash in Barcelona since 2018. So it sounds like we're going to be doing a Legends of Hash. It won't be obviously as intense as the one that Addison did. First of all, I got to give this guy an absolute massive shout out. Um, without Addison, there would be no Legends of Hash in America. Uh, it had really only ever been in Vancouver, Amsterdam, uh, Jamaica, Barcelona. I don't go to America, so why would it be in America, right? Addison hit me up a couple years ago and was like, listen, I want to bring Legends of Hash to America. I think that it's time. I think that there's real value here. And the job that he did, him and Meredith and the whole team, building out all those Moroccan style booths and just, you know, we lost our venue 90 days before the event. Like the guy was just like, Oh, Hey, you know how you put a $10,000 deposit down? Sorry, man. Like my landlord's evicting me. And so we were like, what do you we're like? What? Like, we, <laughs> so we ended up like, he had to find that whole new venue. He did so much that I'll never be able to say enough uh, positive things about Addison and the team down there. Um, just a huge shout out to him for everything that he did. And it looked and sounded like it was an absolutely amazing time. 
Imagine the FOMO I had sitting up here in Canada, not able to go to Legends of Hash now for the third time. I have applied for a Nexus card, so I sent Homeland Security all my information, exposed myself completely, which is fine because I don't uh, break the law or, or do any shady shit. And so I'm hoping that I get this Nexus card by next year and uh, I will absolutely be in Barcelona, but I would also love to be in Los Angeles next year uh, while really probably the year after, because I think we're doing it instead of December around January, but we'll see, we'll see where that all falls. Yes, I, what about you, Logan? You want to tell us a little bit about Logan's journey and how you ended up now at the legends of hash for, is this your third year or second year? Second year. Right. Wolverine dabs. You, you crushed it last year yeah. too, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I was the only competitor. So. Well, that's what better way to, but here, here's the thing. So here's the thing. We can laugh about that, but think about that. What you're really saying was, I was the only person with full melt dry sift. So that's, that's something different, right? When you say I was the only competitor, it kind of takes away from you. Whenever I speak in a room full of heads, I always ask people, who here has flour and almost every hand goes up then i'll ask who here has full melt bubble and a few hands will go up hopefully most people will have rosin which is great that's amazing but if you ask the room who here has full melt dry sift it is fucking crickets and tumbleweeds oh you guys barren. probably know about up in uh, oklahoma there <laughs> 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 <Yep>. <laughs> So, so it's, 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 it's a real thing to just have dry sift that can melt into a liquid just to have it is something to be said. So I personally thank you for showing up and being the only person that showed up with it because uh, otherwise no one would have had it. And that's, uh, that's, that's never a good thing. So tell us a little bit about uh, your, your journey into the static realm and into producing, uh, producing the fire. Well, so essentially I started making extracts when I was 17. So around 2013, 2012, and I made, I, I started with like hydrocarbon and then distillates. I moved on to doing isolates, reformulating, reconstructing. Uh, it's actually not until 2021 that I started doing static. Um, my buddy Dylan had left me his screens when he, when he moved and he went to go work for mock technologies and left me the screens. And he always told me like dry sifts, like the cream of the crop. It's, it's, it's the best of the best. If you can get it, it's the best experience, the best, that the best high essentially. Right. So I started looking into videos on YouTube, you know, and I, I stumbled across your videos. I stumbled across several other videos. So the very first day, I pulled the screens out. I cleaned them completely, set up a table. I had YouTube going. I had my screens right there. I had my material. And I stood there for 14 hours rubbing a screen and listening to other people talk about rubbing a screen and just listening to the actual like screen being rubbed. So that sound will always kind of stick in my brain. Just I've, I've been around it for thousands of hours now, but it's, it's absolutely incredible. Um, as soon as I started doing dry sift and, and I got it to the purity that I was able to achieve, which I consider to be around 98, 99% purity in trichome heads. Um, as soon as I started consuming that, I, I fell in love and I, I couldn't go back to anything else. I, there's, it, it's, it's absolutely perfect in every way, in my opinion simply because the terpene content is right where you want it. It's sitting around four to 6%, which is perfect for human consumption. Terpenes themselves are hydrocarbons. So anything above 6% can be harmful for inhalation. Where so did you I, come up with that number? What, the five to 6% well, range? Well, just that you're safe at four or five, but anything over, because I'm interested in this. I've always, like, listen, I've been smoking eight to 10% terpene, uh, for I, I would say a good solid 10 years, uh, maybe more. I still haven't felt anything, but I do believe, and especially after doing Blue River Extracts with Tony for all those years, that we absolutely reached a level that was too much. 
Um, we never I, yeah. smoked that level for a long time. I felt that level personally, and I, I guess it's just a subjective opinion. I felt that was above 10, you know, around the 11 to 12, it just stopped being enjoyable for me, but like five, six, seven, eight, like even, even, you know, I think the hash we made recently, um, no, that's Piatella. Oh, this was some rosin we made recently at my facility in uh, Canada here, and it came back nine point. 9.8% terpene, 75.7% THCA. Um, but it's, it, I, I wonder where you got that number because it, it's just, like just a very my intelligent guy. It, so it's pretty mm -hmm. much just my opinion. But mm -hmm. at the same time, when you look at it, terpenes are a hydrocarbon. Absolutely. So I've said it a million smoke, times. Yeah, it's hard so to smoke, make solventless hash when it's loaded up with hydrocarbons. How about that? <laughs> Exactly. It, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. But I just I, I find that my throat personally reacts uh, at anything above 6%. I just I start coughing. And it's it, my throat tightens up my chest tightens up. I for me, it's the 6% mark. I don't like consuming things above the 6% mark. So here's a question. Um. If you're using fresh frozen and getting above 6% versus if you're using dried and cured and getting above 6%, reducing the percentage of monoterpenes that are present in the hash, which really for decades, we always dried those out. We cured those out of flour because they were harsh. But now exactly. I'll tell you, life is so fucking trippy, man. Here's a trip, Colin. So my buddy sends, he's like, I want to send you some Piatella. So he sends me this beautiful little piece of Piatella. Dude, yeah. do you know what this looks like to me, Colin? Hash? It looks like bubble <laughs> hash that didn't get dried properly. This was like right. back in the original yeah. days. We, you'd get yeah, shamed yeah. for this. Now yeah. it's the hottest thing. I know. We are yeah. so fucked as human beings. <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> that is, I, I guess it only happens when you get older, where you start seeing these like 25 year cycles where you're like, so like, the thing that everyone shamed everyone for and mocked everyone. I'll never forget someone putting a piece of hash down like this at Legends one year. I think it was Nick T. It just, he he wasn't able to dry it on time. It was definitely nothing against him. And he put it in front of Rob and Dave and they literally just like grabbed it and like was like, that one's wet and like didn't even try it, just threw it to the side. And I do understand it because and, and not, th not to say Piatella smokes like it's wet. It just looks like it's wet. And the reason I would say that is because probably the same thing that's happening with hash that you leave water in, which is that water sort of makes its way out of the hash eventually by foaming the hash up. Piatella, yeah. because you're sealing it in a, in a turkey bag, the terpenes are doing the same thing. They have, they're under pressure and they're, they're, they're traveling outward. And as they travel outward, they foam up the hash and that's yeah. what Piatella is guaranteed 100% for sure. But it totally yeah. looks like buttered wet hash from the nineties. And it did make me chuckle. It does. Yeah. It's funny. So I, cause I said the same thing to myself, but then I moved on fast from that, but that thought, but you know, the one thing I want to go back to what you brought up about the dry cure versus the fresh frozen versus, you know, chemically what's, what's there. I think it's a good call out because it's it's also why some people like, you know, certain types of herb over others. You know, it's it's it has a lot to do with the chemical profile and, and the the you know the chemotype that that has become over the t life cycle of of its of its time. You know, the the choices that that particular grower that processor made. You know, that's the relatable aspect of the actual like the actual medium. You know, so when I think about that. I think you're you're calling out a really important aspect that I think is yet to really come into focus for us. Like I think these are things I know you and I and people like as well as Tony and other a lot of us have had these conversations together that hey yeah like these are different products because by des by design like chemically like they're just different. You know, so I think that's that's really important. It's why I think you know I've worked with a toxicologist for the past 3 years of, of my time you know, doing what I've been doing with formulation and dude, I've learned, uh, you know, I'll just be really candid with everyone. I've learned so much about, you know, how these caustic chemicals harm our bodies. Um, and it's, you know, literally cells dying, you know, so 
from that point of view, I think Mark, you're, you're touching on something real, like the, the upper echelon from fresh frozen, there's chemicals there that are actually protecting our, you know, our bodies versus harming them. But there's also not really a clear understanding of what those are. So um, I think it's exactly. important to call that Dude, out. I honestly feel like we're all still in kindergarten. Yeah. It's like, man, imagine, imagine Sam, he's been doing this for like 40 to 50 years and he also probably feels like he's in kindergarten. Yep. It's just an endless array of like, and then we discover something like rosin. How crazy is rosin? Or even bubble hash, like water hash. Like how crazy are those two things? Without those two things, the face of cannabis extracts would look so different right now. They, uh, they blow my mind. I was happy to be around for both of them. You know, to be like right on the ground floor for both of those things. Uh, I wasn't the first person to do it by any means, but I'll tell you, like, it yeah. wasn't far after Soil Grown pressed that bud on Instagram that he was on Hash Church episode 25 talking about, well, you know, we were we were making flags with our full melt, you know, like in the parchment. And then you'd, you know, zip it with your titanium dabber and then pull a flag and it would be a long flag of hash. He was like, we were making flags and I ran out of hash. And he's like, and I don't know why, but I was just like, I just put a bud in the parchment and I hit that with the hair straightener instead of like doing this to hash to melt it. He just randomly, like for no reason, did it to a flower. And then he's like, when I opened it up, he was like, there was oil all around it. And it was like, I think he was with his dad or something, but they were both tripping out at the whole concept of this. And I mean, my goodness, thank, thank, thank goodness that, uh, that it came to be because personally, I, I quite love rosin. I really do enjoy it. But what I like about it the most is that kids of this generation now, when I say kids like, you know, 18 to 25 year old guys that are like just experimenting for the first time, they're no longer blasting cans of butane like in a very, very dangerous environment that literally could change their lives forever, forever. Yeah. Like you have no idea till you have kids what that means. Like, I just don't want my kids to tattoo their face or, or burn. Those are the two things that I'm like, do whatever else you want, but just like, keep your face, your face. Don't burn. Don't, you know, I grew up with a father who was a fireman. So we took burning super serious. I couldn't believe how many people were willing to risk their lives. I'd see people posting on Instagram, like a girl in a bikini top on a, on a balcony, blasting a can. And in the background, you can see something plugged into the wall outlet outside on the deck with her. And I'm just like, oh my God, like that shit inside the wall is just sparking. Like if you could shrink down and go in the wall, you'd see that they spark continually. And so, and butane is heavy, so it sinks and it pools right at the level of this. Oh my goodness. You know, it's one thing to make a mistake and hurt yourself, but when you burn yourself and now you're burnt for life, that's a real bummer. So I love rosin for that reason alone. The fact that dudes can just go grab a hair straightener and like have a dab in the afternoon from a flower. That's amazing. Big supporter. 100%. 100 yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't miss the open blast days. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. It should just be in a lab with someone who's really good at it and they understand all the SOPs and they have the C1D1 room and like they have degrees in chemistry. Like those are good guys to like, yeah, yeah, you guys do that over there. I'm not against it. The thing about myself that I learned, especially after accidentally sort of stumbling ac ac across water hash and then really focusing and popularizing it, what really blew me away was just the absolute and complete different level of high that you experienced compared to flower. Because I had taken flower right to the ceiling. I was just on the ceiling, just smoking so much flower that uh, I'll be honest, I was coughing shit up. I'd be like, eh, eh. I haven't coughed anything up in like 28 years. And I smoke a lot of hash. Yeah. You don't cough. You don't yeah. cough stuff up when you just smoke hash. Yeah, I, 
I think for me, it's like having the flavors around me are, are more important. I mean, I do appreciate the flower. I mean, I definitely get into like when I'm pheno hunting, I definitely try a lot of the different phenos just so I understand. Gotta love the flower, dude. The flower. I haven't smoked flower in 28 years, but Holy shit. 20 it's a good flower, my man. 20 crazy. No, 24 years. 24 years, sorry. Um, but I love flour. I just look at it as like it's my little resin. It's like the pizza box. You know, it's brought me my pizza. It's like, thank you. <laughs> oh pizza box. Oh, well. But I don't eat the pizza box. I usually open it up and take the pizza out. So that's what I do. I just wash the resin or bounce the resin or press the resin. You know, funny enough, my most watched video on my YouTube channel is this me pressing a bunch of where is my bike flower in the uh, Long's Peak. And it was like giving me like 30% return, this flower. And uh, I pressed like a half pound. It's just funny that flower rosin is my most viewed video. <laughs> you know, that's the world right there. Like you figure it out eventually. You just figure it out eventually. So, yeah. Props to the almost 5 million people who have watched that video. That's yeah, uh, That trips my mind out. You know, the internet is such a trip that you can be like, I'm just going to do this video and touch 5 million people. That's a lot. Oh, yeah. That is yeah. a ton. So what were some of your, uh, you know, your, your likes and dislikes of legends? I would like to make legends better every year. So I always like to hear some criticisms, but uh, I like to hear the likes first so that I can, Feel a little bit good about it before we get taken down a couple of notches. Still man, I like, love it. Yeah, yeah, you guys go first, man. Go for it. Uh, we don't. We haven't. I've never been to an event like that. Um, we they don't really. We don't really do stuff like that out here. It's more like I don't know the vendor style pop ups. So I mean, it's I don't know, man. It's just it was all about the culture. It was beautiful. Every, I mean, the way everything was set up. The, um, yeah, man, it was. Just the best event that we've ever been to personally yeah like the way the judging was set up i like that too yeah you know that everybody just got to kind of judge everybody else's stuff you couldn't necessarily like buy judge kits or anything like that you know what i mean it was just community you know what i mean it's yeah go up to the hash bar and grab some flavors yeah, 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 that, was awesome. yeah that was awesome man the food was awesome and then the was... people could experience also the you know the judge kits but through the hash bar you know and not so they could experience what we were experiencing at the same time that was that's awesome that, that that's not yeah that's nothing that i've experienced before so that was really cool yeah you usually can't try you know the entries that are sitting there or whatever you know the experience yeah. of the show. it's the beauty of california man yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool man it's pretty cool it was uh it was definitely a gauntlet though trying to get through all that hash man that's for sure <laughs> It definitely, uh, it puts you, it shows you where your boundaries are. And it's an interesting, um, you know, listen, this happened by accident. When we started Legends of Hash, it had nothing to do with a competition. It was like Sam sort of was like, wanted to turn it into a competition. Because for me, what I said was I would sell tickets to people who showed me a beautiful piece of hash. So I knew that they were on a level of appreciation of hash that they actually had one in their pocket. I didn't take any, I didn't eat, you know, even smoke any. I just look at it, feel it, smell it and be like, yeah, yeah, you get to come to Legends of Hash. You get to buy a ticket to Legends of Hash. Cause another thing about Legends was we never, it wasn't about ever comping tickets. Everyone paid to be there. And it was uh, the original one well, it was very, very different in the sense that you couldn't promote your business. You couldn't promote yourself. Um, you weren't allowed to have a cell phone present at the event. There was no cameras allowed. Uh, there was really no talking about it on social media or anything like that because most of that shit didn't exist. But, um, yeah, it was different. You know, it was uh, a lot of old school hash smugglers went to the original ones and they just uh, they were serious dudes and they couldn't be they, they could not be. A, a photo taken of them so we made it very strict that you couldn't bring cameras and in fact if you had a cell phone even out in your hand you you would be removed from the premises so it was a fairly strict uh cell phone dash camera rule at legends um 
and and no no promotions whatsoever. So then at that point, Sam was like, wow, like everyone in this room, all 50 people have nice hash. He's like, we should do like a, a little contest. And then all of a sudden, you know, like back then you have to understand too, like Skunkman Sam was like the Snuffleupagus. Like people only really knew about him through stories. They didn't know that he was a real person or until, you know, this was way before Hash Church. Obviously that exposed a lot of people to him, but um, he was low key and people just didn't know who he was. And this was also after, you know, a lot of them were after, um, 2008, which was when I posted the photo of his dry sift for the first time, which and I don't know if you guys ever saw that picture, but it was uh, it was a game changer. I labeled it 99.99999% pure heads, Skunkman Sam secret tech or whatever on IC Mag. And uh, yeah, it's just like pure heads, just looks like caviar. It's uh, actually... Yeah, there's one behind me, but you kind of can't see it. It's like right there. It's just pure heads, pure beautiful heads. And uh, everyone had wanted to smoke. When I first smoked his hash, it was the strongest experience I had ever experienced in my entire life. That shit rocked me so hard. It brought all these stories to life that Rob had been telling me in previous years about how high he would leave Skunkman Sam's house. And I'd be like, well, how high could you really be, man? And I just didn't know. But fuck, I, I figured it out at one point. I left there so high. I'm quite certain I was walking like a one-legged man. Like it was it was over the top. I haven't been that high, actually, in in probably 20 years, more than 20 years. I think those are highs that just come around maybe a couple of times in a lifetime. Like when you're in grade eight and you first hit some dabs. And then apparently when you're. That's 30, how legend so was for me that night, man. Oh, that was, I haven't been that high in so long. <laughs> in so long or ever? I don't know about, <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. It was definitely like the first day. Maybe day never. Day. Yeah, <laughs> maybe never. I mean, we That's were. That's all I'm we saying. Were, it's a potential candidate. That's enough. Oh, yep. yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. By far, some of the most I've smoked. That's for sure. Yeah, lots of dabs, lots of dabs, lots of good dabs though. Yeah, like really good dabs. Yep. Like Definitely. absolutely yeah. spectacular. I think it's a part of the culture that uh, I'd like to see grow. I'd like to see more people have access. I know that. You know, and the, the one thing about Legends, it is very much professional. What I'd also love to see Legends become is to be able to bring other people to witness the culture without feeling alienated and being able to take like micro dabs, you know, get served like microscopic dabs without any shaming and weird ego. I take bigger dabs. Look at this fucking guy's dad, you know, like that whole vibe. And it does exist. Like it exists 100%. Um, it would be nice to bring in other people to witness this part of the culture. Um, and, and just, you know, be a part of it, but without being like, like frighteningly high, you know, like you have to really, it would be a fraction of a pinhead, just a, a little bit of the flavor, you know, they're not even going to blow anything out, but they're going to feel a little flavor and they obviously have to smoke weed. I usually can give a micro dab and make it feel like you've taken one puff on a joint. You know, that's a very small amount of resin. But if they want to feel like they smoked the whole joint, well, that's a little bit more. And if you want to feel like you smoked five joints, well, here you go. Ba -bam. <laughs> but we got to learn how to do that. I think it's an important part of dabbing culture. I also think that D Nail's new unit yes. is absolutely going to help change the way we look at dabbing because the torch is very sketchy and it's yeah, not well indoor friendly. Uh, and it's probably never going to happen. D nails are better, you know, the coils and stuff and that new induction disorderly uh, um, conducts new little coil banger heater. But the D, but the D nail one that have you guys seen that thing? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, my one. God, dude. I, it is. I so have one of the fucking... Terpsu beads. <clears throat> Me too. Uh, I love it. The D nail looks like even the, the next step above that TSB is so loud. <laughs> yeah, I ordered the XL. Yeah, as soon as that, I man. saw it, 
as soon yeah, as I I'm saw it, I had to get it. I was just like, ah, oh, this will make everything. Yeah, I've quiet. got I've <laughs> I've got a pre-order list. If you guys, if anyone isn't on one, I can put you on my pre-order list because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be selling them. Brian, I've been working with him for years, and uh, he just does such great work. He really takes this shit seriously. And uh, I mean, I love my Terp sous vide. I just had, I didn't like the sound of it on all the time. It's annoying and it's a very white noise. I just thought, you know, and I was just talking to Brian one day from D-Nail about it. And I guess he had been working on it. I had no idea, but I was like, dude, if you could just create a Terp sous vide style, you know, vaporizer. And he'd already been working on it, of course, like as if I'm giving this guy advice. <laughs> and uh I swear to God, he showed me this like three days later after I mentioned it. That's why I was like, how could you, how did you create that in three days? And he's like, dude, I've been working on it for months. You just happened to say something three days ago. I was like, oh, <laughs> all right. Indux I like it. The... Nice What's job. That? Indux did a good job on theirs too, the bird. That's really... Oh yeah, dude. So Listen, that that that's nice next job. level. That's something completely different. This is like, you could do... Um, real dab bars like a tool like this brings dab bars into the equation it's protected you're less likely to burn yourself even those outer coils with the cable are sketch as fuck um this thing could hit the ground and not be burning anyone or hurting anyone this is the future of dab bars um where it's no sound it's sleek you just got people raising and lowering them fuck some will probably put these little things on a on a little air pressure compressor with a little pedal on the floor so you can make them go up and down with your like i'm i'm a dreamer man i'm a dreamer i see vapor bars are coming and vapor bars are not going to have joints smoked in them they're not going to have anything burned in them they're going to be like gummies drinks and vaporization of flowers and extracts that's it yeah. at least here in canada I don't know what, what's going to happen in the in the U.S., but uh, definitely the future. It'll be the same way in New York, like yeah. as we turn our stuff on there. I'll tell you, it'll really open up the door for cannabis people as the cigar culture is like dying. Cannabis people come in and buy those grandfathered cigar shops where you could invite people to smoke joints indoors and hang out with one another. Like that would also be very popular. Fucking yeah. private, like cannabis aficionados group where you just go and burn gaggers <laughs> on, on leather furniture with the boys <laughs> Man, that's fucking funny Man, i didn't open one of those <laughs> well you know what the license is hard to get because in most places now you can't smoke indoors even with the big hepa system or whatever um but the grandfathered ones in most cities are the cigar shops there's there's still clubs where people go and literally smoke cigars just in the open air around each other. I can't imagine how unenjoyable that is personally being in like a room with like 20 dudes all just chuffing away hard on cigars. But I could, I could hang out in the room getting joint smoked for a little while. That harshes my throat out too, though. I won't lie. Yeah. It's a whole different kind of hot box. <laughs> Were there a lot of joints smoked at legends? No, I, I had a, Big shout out to to Jay, Happy Monkey Crew. I had Jay there. He uh he was he was one of the few chiefing down. Nice. He, you know he was good though. It was you know repping. enjoyed himself repping repping the the joint smokers. You know there was yeah, a couple that's awesome. a couple hash holes. The in, uh, inventing room guy gave us a couple hash holes to try. Those were delicious. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Ron, our buddy Ron, had some hash holes with him from Sensi Mag oh yeah ron okay yeah yeah well, ron that's how we got it uh turboba i guess ron was the one that told him about us so oh yeah, well, i'm glad he did yes yeah, <laughs> ron, man. yeah dude yeah there's, uh, there's a lot of good hash out here in oklahoma i think you know i know we got our problems there's a lot of overproduction of low quality stuff out here but there's also a, a lot of good hash out here just because of the level of competition and how easy it was to get into it in the beginning. Uh, it's just pushed us all to, I mean, make some better have the fire. Yeah. We're really proud of what Oklahoma is. Yeah. So yeah. we're glad that we got to share that with people. So thank you guys for that. Yeah. Us too. It's all about we're, good hash, man. We're Yeah, that's it, man. That is yeah. absolutely it. It's, uh, 
it's just a nice thing to see the culture of hash continuing. And that's what legends tries to do. It tries to pay homage to the, to the roots, to the old school. Although I, I really, you know, I had someone recently who's in California. <laughs> he's actually in New York too, Colin. He's in California. He's partnered up with some pretty well-known people in the industry and he's doing like an, uh, like a traditional hash. He's like, there's people that just still love traditional hash, you know, the old school gold seal, whatever you want to call it. And um, so he's, he's talking about this hash and how he wants to kind of get it out to the world and promote it. And he was like, I was sorry to not see more of that at Legends because he was at Legends. And I said, well, listen, man, like Legends isn't like what we make it. It's what you make it. So if you want more uh traditional hash of course we'd love because what he said was he said it was an amazing event but he said i felt like it was just one section that we were visiting of the event you know the dabbers that everyone was dabbing he said he was like it was a bit cracky there was a lot of blow torches he's just from a different culture right he's not he's not torching his so when you don't tor blow torch your bangers like it is to see a whole like 150 people doing that like it's hardcore so he was like, I'd like to see a traditional hash. I'm like, well, then get your friends from different traditional hash companies to bring in traditional hash and show us so that we can, of course, we'd love to have a traditional hash section where you could come and see the hash of old and learn about how it was made and meet people from those cultures that are continuing those um you know, those lineages on. I, I love the idea of Legends always paying homage to that, but Legends is also the curation of the of the present of what is at the upper echelons of hash and oils and all the equipment that goes behind it from the bangers to the dab rights to the cardas and the puffcos. Which is also, yeah. I have to give both those companies a shout out, Carta and Puffco um focus v for really normalizing dabbing you know their commercials are almost so generic in the sense of the way you just see like the straightest looking people you know they're painting this different narrative which will like for me i want that bridge i love our culture i love and that's not going anywhere but i also love the idea of building a bridge so people can come and experience our culture and see what it is because it's a pretty cool culture, especially if you love, you know, smoking hash and getting high, you don't have to get annihilated. You don't have to go to Legends and smoke, you know, 27 grams, but it's <laughs> fucking fun if you do. Yeah, the second day I ran into a guy who I know is trying to do a traditional hash brand. He said the exact same thing to me. He's like, what's up with like everyone just using blowtorches? Like, I don't see any like traditional hash at all and you know i think that's to your point it's all in which we make it because you're you're just offering us a, a platform to submit things so if predominantly everyone starts submitting a traditional hash maybe that merits a traditional hash category i don't know maybe we're we're looking at maybe we're all trying to group things together in ways that Perhaps it's not not the right way to look at it. I don't know. Just asking the question, you know. Because the things have, you know, honestly evolved so much, you know. Like, think about, you know, we were just talk touching on the whole fact that, like, if someone came with, like, a sheen to the party with, you know, a brick sheen like that, we'd be like, yeah, that's wet. Like, we're not going to even try that. To now, we look for cue visual cues like that to signify how good it is you know i know that's so, super tripped out dude and it's different though too right because like the thing about it was i guess what i learned to you know to connect to the wet hash was that foamy like expanded so i learned to hate that because when i'd smoke it when i dab it it would just be like it would fuck up the hit so I was like, fuck, this is not like being, and that was my own fault. Like when I first made bubble, I just like finger pressing wet bubble in my hand, showing the whole world how to do it like that. And then it literally took me like five to 10 years of being like, listen, I fucked up. Stop doing this, you know? And people just kept doing it for years, like just rolling up wet bubble and it, it hurt my soul so badly. I'm like, wow, like 
one fucking mistake I make while sharing this information and I got to pay this karmic debt for the next five to 10 fucking years. And then people will be like, Hey dude, check out my hash, crack this ball of hash under my nose. And I'd just be like, Oh my God. It's like totally gone bad. It's like this fucking guy rolled up wet hash. It's Roll just ball. like, it sells like a, <laughs> like a wet sock in a dirty shoe. I'm like, bro. And it was my own, like, it was like, the universe just like kept showing it to me and showing it to me and showing it to me. And I was like, wow, like when you do educate people, you should be careful that you educate yourself first. I did start a little early. I probably should have just done the process for four or five years and then started teaching. But instead, I taught everyone my mistakes for four or five years. And then I learned them myself. Well, there he is. But there was, well, I think there was a time on the forums that, you know, things were traveling a, at a really fast pace. Cause I remember when we met on the forums, we were weird. It just think like threads happened fast. People were trying stuff. I mean, and we were mainly washing in smaller bag systems then um, because our plant counts were so small. I mean, just was a totally different time, you know, like things moved at such a slow pace. So like, yeah, your information that came out was like, it just like happened until it didn't. Dude, didn't all I know is I was like the only motherfucker with full melt out of every single person I always met ever. And then all the people I met after with full melt were all people that I turned on, made hash with and got, you know, like turn them on to the information. So it was what an incredible blessing to be allowed to be a part of that, because I'm telling you, I showed I personally for sure showed hundreds, if not over a thousand people in person. And I'll never forget pulling that bag. You know, the gold bag would be the first bag that like a, a chunk would come out and people's, I called it the eyebrow raise. I just see people like this and then they go, hmm? and their eyes would go up. And it was like, that's right, motherfucker. That's right. Because before that, when you're pouring the water and the ice in into the bucket, no one can wrap their head around that. They're like, you fucking idiot. Like, you're not supposed to do that. That is the stupidest fucking thing you could do to cured weed. Welcome, Addison, by the way. I hope you're feeling better, brother. Yeah, a little better. Got a, I guess I got like a, it's from my diet. It's from eating carnivore and all that stuff all the time. And I guess um, you can get like these pockets in your intestine. Because I don't like salad. I don't like fucking grains or any of that stuff so now i One got those like, guys hey eh? you need some fiber bro yeah so now they're like the the doctor's just like look some people need to eat kale and you're one of them so <laughs> listen so, yeah. i will say this kale can be delicious when when prepared properly and it's bitter when it's not prepared properly you need to get yeah. some like awesome like kale caesar salad or something Oh yeah, no, I got it all figured out. It's, it's like, I know what it is. And I kind of walk that fine line because I like that diet so much, but this is the first time that I ever got like a, this acute diverticulitis, which is, you know, you can get these like pockets, I guess, in your intestines. So, but nothing major. It's, it's minor. It's like a, a liquid diet for a couple of days. And then, so mostly like bone broth and electrolytes and stuff like that for like two or three days. And then uh, everything's good. But yeah, nothing major. Well, we were giving you much praise earlier, brother. Just talking about the legends, talking about... We haven't heard from Cache yet. He'll kind of probably tell us his story next. But uh, we've been talking to uh, the Oklahoma guys and in great detail of their journey and how it was yeah. uh, Rob, yeah. I guess, from Sensi Mag that uh, turned yep. you on to them. Awesome. Ron. Thank you. Oh, Ron. Thank you, Ron. K yeah. Koblowski or... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ron's a good dude. Ron was real helpful with uh, when I reached out to him, you know, because we wanted to have makers from more places, you know, and especially in places where we feel like they've established, you know, they've done a good enough job in there. You know, you get in this little pocket and you're hunting and you've got the, you know, the, 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 the blessing of the state and you're doing all this stuff. And, you know, it's, it's you're in your little pocket and you're away from everybody else. There's stuff that just kind of builds over there. And I think Oklahoma and especially the guys at skunk are just proof of that, that, you know, guys are going to get a hold of genetics. They're going to get a hold of tech. They're they're looking at all the same stuff. And just because they're in a place, you know, that's not where you are, just because they're in Oklahoma or they're somewhere else, um, doesn't mean they're not making fire. And I think they proved that. So that's, uh, you know, same with Ace Lure. I think my my favorite entry of the entire event was number three from Ace Lure, 
which I think was like a gelato or something. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, and Aisler is from St. Louis, Missouri of all places. So um, yeah, it was cool this I, year, man. I, I learned that it. from the bags, dude. Every Cause people be like, where's the best hash? And I'm like, wherever I am, dude, because I carry these bags with me and I roll and I make hash wherever I am. And of course people are growing dank weed everywhere. You just have to find those people. Cause what people do is they go somewhere and they were like, yeah, I went to so-and-so fucking weed sucked. And I'll be like, correction your ability to find good weed sucked and therefore yeah, you contact. found bad weed. Yeah. But um, everywhere has great stuff. And uh, all you have to do is, you know, make the hash, press the hash. doesn't matter where you are. If you're, if you've got, if you got a hold of those genetics, which I mean, you can buy them from seed banks. It's not like you need some special clone yeah. or something gifted down from the fucking gods. You can pull phenos right out of these bag bags of seed that you can buy. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I think you need knowledge, you need the network, and you just need the desire to do it. And I think that's everyone we everyone we met and everyone we meet has all those things. You know, they're not. And people always to, think people always think knowledge comes from the mentor. It's like no wisdom comes from the mentor. Knowledge comes from your mistakes. Yep. Well, so. You got to fuck it up, like you were saying earlier. It was so counterintuitive to take material and add it with ice and water. It was so counterintuitive. It was like, what are you fucking doing? And then even the dry sift methods are kind of counterintuitive. So I think it's, you know, when you walk people down that direction and they see it, um, it's crazy now because there just seems to be so much everywhere. And then even for guys like us, which, you know, we understand the microns, we understand, um, you know, what they're pulling. And as the rosin and the hash world is getting more and more mature, meaning that, you know, more consumers are having access to it. You're watching, we're watching consumers get duped in a way, um, you know, because they are, they are happy to, and unknowingly going to smoke on some 45U or some 25U or a mix of the, those other microns. And they're going to be like, Hey, this is hash. And we're going to be like, when we clean the banger, we're going to be like, what the hell's going on here? So, there's that little learning curve that's kind of there. And I think we watched it here in California over the last three years, four years, where people were like, well, I can get rosin for much cheaper. And they're like, oh, cool, get it for cheaper. And then then they start to get it from where they're getting it. And then they realize like, oh, this is, this is like the bottom of the barrel stuff. The stuff that I tried with them, with those guys in that little sesh, that shit's crazy. How do I get that? And it's like, oh, well, that's this. You pay so this for money. it. So, yeah, you pay for it. <laughs> There's levels <laughs> either, either to it for sure. There's well, levels to it for sure, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about hash. It's uh, it's dynamic and there's people who still love their traditional hashes and pressing it and feeling it and crumbling it up and smoking it in joints. I, I got to admit, I don't smoke a lot of it, but when I smell it in the air, I'm like, oh, shit, you're smoking some of that hash. It just oh, reminds yeah. me of, you know, being younger and I did smoke a lot of hash back in those days. Well, it's a journey and you see them on the path. And you're like, oh, you're on the path. Fucking cool. And then you go back to your, your house and you're like, I got my timer. I got my fucking temp thing. I got my dunk tank. I got the slurpers. I got this. It's like, it yeah, but the... we're sociopaths, dude. That's yeah, uh, we're, 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 <laughs> we're definitely we're broken. Fucking... We're the... Hey, I want to hear from Cache. So uh, What's up? How, how, what was Legends like for you, brother? You know, uh, half our team was coming straight from MJ BizCon, which was... Uh, uh, you know, what an absolutely uh, dynamic <laughs> like what so that's like you went to ChadCon and then uh, you went to legends yeah wow uh, that's a completely different experiences obviously i think you did it um, in the right order definitely um we ran through mj biscon as fast as you possibly can and you know met the people that we've done business with and all that kind of stuff and um it's wild you know going through these events for 5, 10, 15 years, you run into the same people and they're like, oh, you're now with this company and you see these guys. So like, you, you know, for us, we end up just talking to people that we know. Um, but it was, you know, so that was cool. Um, but it was a challenge, uh, you know, kind of changing over to Legends of Hashish. And I think, uh, I, uh, I think we probably underestimated how, uh, how many you know entries we were gonna have to uh go through um and i don't think we uh prepared adequately for that um yeah but well, let yeah. me just tell uh, you there is no personally. adequate preparation <laughs> for that actually it's psychotic 
And it just is what it is. It's like having kids when people are like, oh, I wish I could have prepared more for having kids. It's like, you can't. You just have them no. and, and they're psychotic and then you just figure it out. And and so yeah. is Legends of Hash. It's It makes no sense. But, you know, I do want to say, um, you know, I, we've done a lot of events over the years and um, this was a very, very cool, a very special kind of experience. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, we feel super honored to be a part of it. And um, I just think there's a lot of like little details that were really, really cool that, you know, uh, you just don't really see at events. Like, mm. you know, the specific giveaway stuff that I really enjoy, like our team has, you know, all this Legends of Hash stuff that we get to use over the year. And, and um, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I was able to get some stuff and bring it home to my wife. So she gets to use it too. And, um, so I think that was really cool. Like the stuff that you guys chose to give away was all like really nice. And it was not just like mids giveaway stuff that you normally get. Yeah. So I think that was really cool. Um, you know, how the booths were set up was really cool. Um, uh, we, you know, we've, we've known Scott for a long time. And so that's kind of uh, our, you know, kind of inroad into this event. And it was just kind of cool seeing him out in the wild, um, <laughs> you know, doing his thing and, you know, um, I, I thought that that was really cool for everyone to like see the man himself and be able to like sesh with him and like everyone else there. It, I, I thought that was really, really cool. And that was kind of like right in the middle. Um, dude, he's kind of yeah, like the skunk man, Sam, in a sense, you know, cause Sam yeah. was always that very same thing at the early legends. People were just like, Oh my God, that's him. He's right there. Yeah. And he's just kind of a crazy <laughs> character, right? He's just like, oh, shit, there's just, you know, and it's also Sam was like, kept to himself. He didn't go out a lot. He was like, always head down in the greenhouse kind of thing. And so to just suddenly see him absolutely like a kid in a fucking candy store, just chuffing hash. I suspect Scott was a similar way. Since I've seen both, I have to admit that it, they are very alike in some ways, where like, Scott, Scott's, you know, everyone is just giving him hash and talking to him. So he's kind of like, oh, what do you got? And oh, what's over here? So he's just having so much fun. But he did tell me this year, um, he's like, listen, we need to spread out this judging because this was too much. <laughs> he's like this. And I'm like, if it's too much for you, I'll definitely take your advice. Because I know he... I've seen him run gauntlets on like 18 rigs and just. But you, fucking... we did have the intention of doing that. It just didn't work out and it wasn't it anything on us. It was, uh, it was difficult to get the entries on time to be able to offer them a week early to everyone. And, the, and I'll explain the issue. So what happened was when I built the timeline, just like a goofball, I didn't realize that when I was going to be making that point of contact with all of the makers, it was during harvest season. So what we're going to do now to adjust is, um, and I guess we can announce it here, we're going to move Legends to January um, for LA. And then that way, we kind of have our own space. And when we timeline it back, um, everything we're going to need to do with those makers is going to be in December, uh, which is a lot better for us. And then that way, we'll be able to get the rosin judging done at home um, and all those things that we planned on doing. It was, my, it was my fault because I obviously was doing so much. I didn't realize where it fell. Um, but now uh, we'll be able to do it in January, which means that for Legends 2024, there will not be a Los Angeles Legends 2024. It'll be in uh, January of 2025. So I just want to say one thing. Instead of a swag bag, I think Legends of Hash gives away 90 U bags. That's what we should call <laughs> our swag Let's bag. Let's do it. Let's that call it the from 90, now on. The 90 U bag. People are which like, is an those, interesting those motherfuckers at legends don't fuck around and the, the, hey, well, comes... I, I i thought there was going to be a 90u from you there marcus uh a nice no. uh, 44 gallon for everyone dude i'm telling you i gotta represent with <laughs> bubble bags next year way more 100 yeah. percent. i hope to be there well not next year but the year after you know what he said january this, close to next so the, year. the way that the gift bags work out because i have this hair across my ass with gift bags i don't I go to these events and they give you this gift bag and you're li you literally most of the time you just want to hand it back. Um, it's a, it's a really low ball attempt at marketing. It's, it's kind of like a, it's kind of just like a, I, I look at it as like a distraction. It's like, Oh, here's a weird bag that you get to carry around with a bunch of shit in it. You probably don't want. And we kept our, we kept our agreement to the companies because we haphazardly promoted them. 
So with us, it's more of um, we really take a long time to make sure that each company that we're choosing and selecting and working with does have a product that's going to be helpful, useful, something we haven't seen before. Um, and then we do our own stuff like uh, like, you know, Zara was talking about, like we have the we did the little uh, tool stands, which came mm. from which came from like eating dinner. at <laughs> we were eating dinner at a, a spot in L.A. And then when you leave there, you flip over your little chopstick stand and it says, I stole this from whatever the name of the restaurant is. And I was like, oh, this is a fucking great idea. And I, I took it and I used it as a, a dab stand for a while. So then I was like, this is a great thing. And it kind of puts us on their, on their table. They see our logo. Um, so it was just kind of a great idea. And they're, they're inexpensive. They're not super costly. Uh, but that, that we put in the sonicators. We put in the, um, the uh, magic carpets, which we did with, um, with some people from out of country. So, yeah, we're super Hot stoked, those. man. Those bags. Yeah, those bags come together in a really cool way. And then. Of course, the sponsors like 710 Labs and Dabber Doc and Chill It and all these guys that come forward um, <clears throat> and, and make sure that we have the products. DNA and, and Crockett. And, you know, when you're getting that much stuff in your gift bag, like I think we, we, we deconstructed a gift bag. And I think we're going to release um, in some some we're going to send out some uh, some content. We'll put up some content that'll show like what the actual value of the gift bags is. But I think we're going to now refer to them as the 90U bags, which I think is great. Nice. Idea. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to DNA too. Um, they, uh, they were super nice to us and uh, uh, we've been running their stuff for a long time. So it was nice to catch up with them and get some new gear too. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah. Oh, that was dope. They had some great genetics too, man. All the, what they did, if you saw what they did, they took honey smashed banana, which won the rosin last year. Smashed and then they just smashed everything with honey banana. Which kind of <laughs> awesome. awesome. That's, That's going to be a fun guys. one. <laughs> Ooh. That's gonna There's going to be, gonna be some hunt. nice things. Well, there's already mm -hmm. some stuff that spun off of it because the um, the guys at Mills, Chris, uh, Chris, and those guys at Mills AB, they've already they had that stuff early, and they were cutting Z into all that stuff too. So now there's a bunch of these other ones that I saw that AZ that AB has that are kind of using some of those, like the the strawberry, um, the strawberry and the honey banana. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I love it, man. Absolutely. Hey, I got to shout out my buddy, Dan, who he's got these 3D printers and he 3D printed this little dryer that you like put your banger into and it plugs in through a USB and then it like dries your banger after you dunk it in the alcohol. <laughs> what? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah a little oh banger God. dryer. That's that's it right there. A little banger dryer. I have to have these inserts because I've got little 10, 10 mil uh, JPs there, but uh what a cool little product that is. That's beautiful. So much innovation. We were messing around with, um, when we were looking at the dab, dab tool stands and some of the other stuff, uh, we found these hearing aid dryers <laughs> that you, there were these little tiny hearing aid dryers and like you pop the top open and it was mesh basket inside and you would drop your hearing aid in there and close it. And it would, had a fan on the bottom that would blow up through it. So we were, we were sourcing these things, but I kept breaking them. And I was like, that could not find a good source for him because I want because a banger would fit in there with your stuff and you could close it up and it would just blow air through it. But well, that's basically of, uh, what this is out. doing. Yeah, that's a great looking product. So, um, Cache, how was uh, did you guys get over to Ego Clash afterward or we did not? Um, yeah, uh, definitely kind of uh, for us, it was a little bit under the radar. So I think we're kind of just late to even finding out about it i mean we're pretty yeah. late to uh legends as well <laughs> uh sorry about that we didn't we we weren't the ones holding it all up but uh no you guys killed um, it yeah you guys killed it. but um yeah uh you know how it goes i think you know shout out to all the other competitors because especially from excuse me you know from from oklahoma and, and new york it sounds like uh, uh the logistics there are uh, significantly more difficult than what we had to deal with. We're in LA. So like a uh, uh, huge congratulations to you guys because yeah. we've, we've been through it uh, trying to do an event in, you know, around the, the country. And, and that, that is uh, extremely difficult to do. And so, you know, huge congratulations, Chris and Colin and, and, and Logan. I know it's a little bit easier for you down there, but uh, you know, uh, that, that is um, something to be proud of. And obviously, your guys' entries were fire too. So, damn, yeah, there's a, a lot of heat, man. A lot of heat. Congratulations, Colin. That was a 
It was good to see you up there for sure. And and I just you gave me that jar when I left, and I I held on to it. And I I actually was looking last night. I was going to take it down, and I'm like, oh shit, I got the I got the winner right here. So I got to try that. So that was really yeah. nice, man. Very smooth. Thank you. So that's different than what I gave you is actually different than what I won with, but okay, it's still in the same we what I would consider the ga same gas category, but still has some like some complexities there. I don't know. Like whenever you try it, like Great try flavor. it at, at different temp at different temps, it's like gassy, but also like tropical, floral, smooth. It's like I don't know. It's it's interesting, but um. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. In the event, like, just kind of going on that a minute, it was was amazing for so many reasons, you know, from looking at it from last year to this year. Last year was great, but this year I felt like I had a better layout and the hash bar was really focused and it just had a really good flow to it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was good to see Don and Aaron, of course, and um, I picked up their the pack that they had. They They hooked me up on that and got some other other single packs from those, them as well i'm stoked we're really stoked to put that into the into the greenhouses this summer um but overall i mean it just i think i thought the judging was much better this year i felt like it it really was really honest like it just you didn't you just had no idea like i to be honest like completely forgot i didn't even know what our number was i had to call my cousin i was like yo like what number are we um and that was even after the fact because i didn't even know um and it was good it was good to go through it and just kind of be methodical and and really give everybody the time of day but i also agree with scott um and i understand the circumstances <laughs> it was uh i you know i can you know i love hash so i definitely will 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 definitely go through it all but it was uh I do use like three different rigs, to be honest. I'm glad I used an e-rig a little bit. And then I went back to my, my room um, later in the night and I was, I was just using a regular rig and yeah, but it was, there was some really dynamic flavors. So everyone out there, man, like congrats and, you know, skunk, you guys crushed it. They had really great entries. Um, really enjoyed yours. I think I remember yours specifically um, when someone asked me. I was talking to Alex, I think, from Hashtech about that. Um, so really good job, guys. Um, solid. All yeah, around. shout out, shout out to Alex too. The the just yeah. the just having him there and I think just having like the energy that he brings with his team and how they're cutting the videos and like he's really leading the way with like day two. We woke up and he had a video cut from day one that was running that morning. So it's like shout he's really on top of it. Yeah, yeah, shout out to those guys, man. They they do a really good job. And I think you know, there are certain things this year that we tried to really narrow down on and focus on. One of them was the hash bar. The other was um, the layout. So it's good to hear people um, recognizing some of that stuff. And it's, you know, that it's it's not hard to be prepared and to lay it all out. It, I think we, we spent a little more this year on production and then the actual like team of producing the event. So I think that paid off a lot for us too. And it gave us the ability to to put on an event that we had all the boxes checked. But one of the major components that made it so great was that we really didn't have any makers that were late or that were holding us up or that were, you know, causing problems. And, and, you know, that'll happen sometimes because you got logistics and you got so many different moving parts. But for this year, it was, I mean, didn't have any issues. And then after the event, didn't have a single maker have any issues or complaints um, you know, we had one little hiccup where the judges boxes that we ordered, uh, because there was an issue with printing and they weren't, uh, honest about it. It actually didn't arrive on time. So we're shipping those out now, but it gives us like that little comment tail to be able to reach back out and send those to you guys, as well as the, uh, the new product, uh, Carta is launching a brand new product that they're going to, um, send out to each one of the judges. So, um, gives us a little touch point after the event. Uh, and sometimes you can turn those lemons and lemonade, make it good. Um, so it was, uh, but best year yet. And I, I, even talking to Meredith, even talking to Golden, um, we had, you know, just great sponsors, great makers, everything worked out. The guests were amazing. Everyone, you know, didn't have any issues, any trouble. So um, I think we might've bent the gate a little bit with, uh, <laughs> with some mistakes that we made, but, you know, we'll pay for that. But uh, everything else, man, it was really, uh, 
you know, from all the work that we put into it, when it all works out and when everyone has a blast, it's just the hugest payoff ever. So I got to thank everyone, um, you know, for coming out and doing it. And there's nothing better than um, tormenting your friends with hash. You know, there's nothing better than uh, putting the boys through the gauntlet or the ringer and, you know, watch putting the fear of God into Debbie <laughs> and kind of seeing them. Or you know, the funniest one, honestly, was Darby. <laughs> because every time I'd go see Darby, he'd just be like, oh, man. This is so great. You know, you're just having so much fun. JP is a monster though. That guy can smoke hash like nothing I've ever seen in my entire life. So um, shout out to those guys too, man. They all made awards. Um, we had the great, you know, section of the award ceremony when they were giving stuff out. And I think every person that won anything from them was just blown away with what the actual prizes were and what they got. So nothing like getting a hand blown, you know, trophy from any one of those three guys. So Shout out to them and shout out to the winners for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome for sure. Yeah, just, you know, to close out my thoughts on the event, I think it's like, it's, I'm excited to see what you guys are able to do next year. And, you know, thanks so much for, for the invite again. And, you know, there was steep out there, man. There was a lot of good entries. So, um, and big shout out to Brian from Best Friend Farms, who uh, is going to be working with us in New York. So, um, oh, nice. Yeah, we're still. Is that, is that who put in the material for you guys? So we had part of the material we grew ourselves, which we have our own living soil beds, and then Brian contributed some material that we we grew or he grew indoor living soil, um, called gas mask. And gas mask was a part of that we blended with two other, uh, really one other batch that we had. It was like, mm -hmm. it was like I'd say, it was a a quarter of of the batch was was the gas mask so it was uh it adds it's a nice it's a really good varietal brian's a super talented grower it's the material was phenomenal we just yeah it just was meant to be so and it's funny because i was telling marcus like we did a batch just with brian that was meant for it and then when we watched it i called brian i was like it just isn't it like for whatever reason and so we went back in and uh my cousin and i kind of kind of came up with this so big shout out nice. to Zach, the rest of the team great work great work man yeah no we appreciate it man it was uh it was one of those situations where i think just putting it all together and, and it all working out was perfect and you yeah. know i've talked to a bunch of people afterward that are um you know, some people want to compare legends to other events and or compare other events to other events. And I think it's it's kind of a slippery slope because why would you do that when you can attend both events and have a great time? They might be different speeds. They might be at different places. They might have different formats. But, um, you know, you, you get out of it what you put into it. And if you go into it with a good attitude and you go into it with, uh, you know, with a desire to meet people and have fun and and rip some terps and have a blast. They're all awesome. You know, it, it's, it's afterward uh, or, or the people that I think don't enjoy themselves that want to criticize and, and try to draw these dividing lines. And it's the same thing in politics right now. It's the same thing, you know, in wars and other shit, everyone wants you to kind of decide. And it's like, we're not, we, we don't have that issue. We're not politics. We're not any of those things. We're hash. So just go and have fun and smoke hash and have a great time, whether it's at ego, whether it's at legends, whether it's at, the hash ball, whether it's at a local thing where you're going to, um, because, you know, the more you do that and have a good time and have a great attitude and a good energy toward it, the better the event is for everyone. Um, and then the more fun you fucking have, you know, you get good hash, you have a great time. So I'm not one to compare. Um, I was bummed that I didn't get to get up to Ego Clash. I actually, uh, I enjoy uh, those type of events, you know, but I just, it was my daughter's birthday. Um, so I wasn't able to make it up to it, but uh, I sent a message to Brandon and, and we talked a little bit. So, and I know they killed it. You know, they had a great event. Looks like it was probably one of their biggest ones they've ever had. Um, so yeah, love, you know, love to those guys and, and shout out to anyone who's doing an event because I know how much goes into it. I know how much, how many things can go wrong and then how you deal with those things are really going to determine whether or not you're going to have a successful event. So. So I appreciate variables. you doing these events because, you know, there was a period of time there for everyone that, you know, we're like, fuck, this will never happen again, you know? And so, uh, you know, big props to you and, and everyone else throwing these events again because, you know, the culture, you know, uh, there was definitely, uh, uh, you know, a fear that it would really kind of go to the wayside and especially, yeah. 
you know, in, in California. So, um, yeah, I'm stoked that uh, these are happening again. Yeah, or to or that it goes to like profiteers, like people who are just putting on minimal infrastructure, and you know, there's card tape, there's card tables, and shit's just kind of more like a sesh, which which still has its place. A sesh is a great place to go and get, you know, find some deals and find some great stuff and see who you like. But um, we try to provide something that just has every corner, every turn would impress us, would make us kind of, you know, say, oh, this is nice. You know, we stayed in nice hotels and we've been to great events and we've done those things. So um, the food is something that I think I wanted to ask you guys about because I, I, I personally get to set the entire menu. Um, so that's a lot of stuff that I like. And that's probably why I have this, uh, this gut issue. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to get some feedback from you guys about the food. What did you think about the food? What did you think about that stuff? Uh, I'll go uh, first, I guess. Um, I think the food was really good. However, I don't think there um, – it could have been food – okay, I'll put it to you like this. If there was like a fire taco stand, um, I would have been totally down for that, you know? Um, yeah. I'm a simple guy, so maybe um, some of those flavors were more than um, – I wanted to challenge my body with that event. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think it was good. You know, a bunch of my team had some, um, yeah, I think if you, if I was to have a, a suggestion, um, and this is a logistical nightmare, uh, before I, before I say it is like, you know, how can you get maybe one or two or three food trucks with different cuisines? So it could appeal to like different people. Um, I think, you know, if that's something it logistically, that's a nightmare, but um, yeah. Yeah. Just personally, that's something I would never do. I think the, the food truck kind of creates a, a vibe. That's definitely, I mean, you're standing there and there's a, there's three or four lines now and there's, you know, the food yeah. truck can run out of food and you have less control. So it's when you're delivering that much food to somebody, you have to have, you have to understand all of it and what's going to go out there. So food trucks, I think are dope. That's just something that I don't think we'll ever do. But um, and there's yeah. also a reason for the menu. The reason for the menu is also uh, Marcus originally did it in a Lebanese restaurant. So we wanted that's Mar that's the Marcus half is like to have Lebanese mm. food and to pick a great restaurant. So it, legend started in a Lebanese restaurant. So we want to have a Lebanese food. And then I bring in from my childhood of skateboarding and being an asshole in Boston. We used to go to these um, we'd go to these uh, big brunches at these huge hotels and there'd be like 20 of us and we'd be all roasted and we'd go in there and just like eat and then take a bunch of croissants with us and leave. And that was kind of part of, <laughs> that's my addition to it is like, well, brunch is the greatest thing ever if you're high. Um, so that's kind of how the two menus come together. Um, but taco, I, I just got a thing about taco trucks where I've been to too many events and there's like a hamburger truck and a taco truck. And it just kind of, I feel like uh, it's not like a sit down thing to eat. And we want people to have like, sit down and enjoy hash and sit down and enjoy food. Um, so that's kind of why we go in that direction. But I think we can, of totally course, see that. we can, of course, figure out things that are a little more simple, but that's why we do. If you went, there's a fruit bar that has cut fruit the whole time. It has drinks, it has tea, it has water. It's kind of like a little oasis that just has more simple stuff to kind of keep you um, recharged and charged while you're doing the event. So we could probably add, and if you looked over there, there were like a lot of finger foods and stuff that was going out on that other side. Um, over by the hash bar, we had like a massive section that we were serving other food at. So, I definitely missed that. I don't know how. I mean, I was in a in a in a cloud of smoke. You were roasted. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where <laughs> the yeah, drinks I definitely were. didn't see that. So the same oh, spot wow. that we had all the drinks. So there's a massive drink bar that was all to the left of the hash bar, and that whole entire wall after the GZ art dis display, there was yeah. a huge you know, spread there that had all the fruit, all the pastries, all the cookies and snacks and all that stuff was served out there all day. And there was little finger food and stuff like that that was on that table as well. So, Yeah, I think maybe some user error on my on my end. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm not figuring out where that was. We kind of like- Did you drink anything? More. Did you drink anything while you were there? Uh, like uh, alcohol was? No, like all the, because we had all the beverages. Like there's a massive beverage station that was to the left of the bar. I wasn't sure if you were able to. Man, I don't know how uh, I could have possibly not seen that. 
But uh, uh, I, I have an idea of how, oh, wow. how you didn't see hash. <laughs> <laughs> so much hash. We went right like, out to drink so, anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what do you mean? Uh, after Vegas, I don't think I drank for a week. Oh man, that could be rough. What was uh, I'll tell you? What? Oh, well, go, go ahead, ahead, Marcus. Well, no, I was just going to say in regards to your last conversation, I was like, you know, the way you could marry uh, what you had replied to him, Absent, in regards to Leia, like get, the whole food truck uh, lineup idea is a bummer. Like the food trucks are great. The lineup part is a bummer. But imagine yeah. that you had a taco truck or two and you had them parked out back, but no one was going up to those trucks. They were just hammering out tacos nonstop and filling trays that were then brought into the place put down just like they would be any of the other food and people just grab them that way. So there's always solutions to these things is all I'm saying. And uh, I agree with uh, both of what you said. I, you know, yes, legends of hashish had Lebanese food. It was in a Lebanese restaurant for 13 plus years. That being said, it certainly won't have to be Lebanese food forever. We could, we could revisit different menus and whatnot. And uh, like Addison said, take in, in intake people's opinions. It would be great to send out a little questionnaire about this, Addison, and see what kind of numbers we could get in regards to all, all of the things, like how did you like the cereal bar? What did you think of the, the, you know, the little oasis? What did you think of, you know, the, the, the menu? What did you think of the hash bar? All these different things. I told them earlier before you came in, I'd love to hear, some positive things that you have to say about legends, but we'd love to hear anything that we can help fix it as well, because there's, oh, yeah. you know, that's really where the real value is. It's nice to get like, Oh, let's all pat Addison on his back. Cause he fucking crushed it so hard, but it's also nice to be like, Hey dude, if we just do this a little differently, it could even, we want to make it better every year is basically where I'm coming from. And that's how we did it. I mean, we, what you saw in year two was us taking the feedback from year one. What you saw here in year three was us taking feedback from year two. And I think, you know, we're already, um, you know, Marcus, you and I are already talking about other stuff. I think we could talk about that at some point, but um, oh, you know, I might, already, I might have accidentally, well, I might, I might have fucked it up earlier and said something. That's I was fine. What big, did you, so. you, you talked about what? <laughs> about, about uh, you know, rocking uh, legends in, uh, in Barca. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, that's actually, that's scary for me. That's like, I'm, I'm excited, but at the same time, I'm a little scared because I like to imagine how it was things. when I just did it out of my pocket and just like try like wasn't from Barcelona. I'd have to be renting venues and chairs and tables and all this crazy shit. And it was yeah. just like super stressful. Everything's in euros. So from a Canadian standpoint, it's like, oh, how much is it? It's just a thousand euros. It's like, oh, so like eighteen hundred Canadian. Ugh. Oh, like every every bill, <laughs> every bill was like double the the bill <laughs> and of course i'm paying for everything with no sponsors whatsoever not even I'm my so own company uh, yeah that was we'll crush this out dude we got the right people on our side and uh i think it'll be nice it's not going to be anything like what you've put together in los angeles it's going to be barcelona style it's going to be more intimate it's going to be you know be what it is friends is yes. good i spent time with him at at legends and I gave him some uh, a couple dabs of some some fresh press and I think a couple of I think some of the stuff that both Marcus and you have. Mm. Uh, yeah, Lorenzo's awesome, top notch dude, man. Like I remember when he came on the scene. I remember literally like I met him quite a few years ago. It could be as as many as ten years ago at this point. Maybe at Soma's. I'm not sure exactly where. He's just one of those really cool Italian guys that I clicked with right away. Uh, and then he just climbed and climbed. And now he had, you know, he's got a shop in Amsterdam. He's got this beautiful Terps army in, in Barcelona. Shop. He's, uh, he's working it. He's got two shops now, man. Awesome. Killing it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to working with those guys and uh, figuring out um, how to pull this off. It's pretty, uh, it's definitely, um, it's going to be exciting and fun. So I'm looking forward to it. It's again. like in three days, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll see we'll see what happens i'm definitely uh i like to do things a little more <laughs> a little more laid out and planned but at the same time i definitely trust uh the rest but of the we group, have so. we have good teams we have like spots for people to meet we're gonna get a great spot the food and the everything will be really nice and we'll make sure we get invites out to all the all the good hash makers that want to make their appearance definitely 
Um, I've got to jump off. I've got, I've got to go um, pick up some medication and deal with some other stuff, but, and my stomach is killing me right now. So, um, but I do appreciate everybody. I, I wanted to jump in. I apologize that I've uh, oddly, I got this weird issue that kind of came up out of nowhere, but um, yeah, I got to get going. Um, not feeling so good. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to jump off, but thank you guys all uh, very much. And I'm looking forward to working with Marcus and putting some more stuff together. So yeah. Peace out, brother. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you guys. We haven't, we haven't heard from, we haven't heard from Alex Gonzo in the room here. He came in a little while ago. What's up, dude. What's up guys. How we doing? We doing good, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I, I don't know you off the top of my head. Yo, you're, uh, you're good. You're good. Let me just jump on video here. What's up, guys? Marcus, go. we met at Ego. I'm uh, I'm Calix. We were, oh, we're the and, packaging sponsor. Yeah, of course. In, for, in, for in Barcelona. In Barca. we were, we, yeah, yeah, brother. <laughs> Fucking A, dude. Good to see you. Through the haze of all the hash. Yeah, man. It's good to see you guys. Yeah, absolutely. So you had a good no, time guys, at Legends? Dude, unreal. You guys were talking about what was good. Uh, I think one of my favorite parts was the the cereal bar, the minis, the mini aspects. Like whoever thought of that, dude, uh, killed it all time. Dude, so good. It's good to have little things like that. You know, even the little lattes with like the glob mops and legends, like stencils on top of the lattes. That's just so fucking cool, man. Addison really went above and beyond and got some some cool concepts and ideas to, uh, you know, you got to do a lot, a lot of those little things to make it a special evening. And, you know, nowadays, there's just so many different things that bombard the senses that, uh, you know, from the perspective of legends, it's all about curating the right products, the right sponsors, the right hash makers. We're like curators and we're creating a living art gallery of hash. You know, that's what Legends of Hash is. And it happens for a night. It's a pop-up. I mean, wouldn't it be an amazing thing one day to see like Legends of Hash, just dispensaries with like the hash bars, like the whole, like the little cereal bars, like the whole concept just put into a baller dispensary. That's like the Legends of Hash. Like you want to feel like what it was like to be at this event, like go to that dispensary. I wouldn't even call it a dispensary. I would call it like a, a hash bar. You know, yeah, you got to go to the Legends of Hash hash bar, man. That place is crazy. Everyone in that city would want their dabs in that hash bar. Hash gallery. Yeah, that's it, man. So you had a good yeah, Legends man. anyway, is is what you're saying with the cereal bar and the... No doubt, no doubt. I think whatever we can keep doing to curate those like little uh, points of, of experience. I mean, these hash makers are putting you know, all, all, everything they can into, into making the best product. And, um, this whole event, like, I, I, I love that. That's, that's what we try and do with our packaging, right? Like the, the user experience and, uh, making sure that everybody has a positive interaction. And so, uh, you kill it. Like with the stencil, it's like those little things, the little moments that stand out. And if, if you can put a bunch of those together the whole time, it's like, ah, oh, the detail here and there and, and, and yeah. the effort put into, uh, the, the event man you guys we yeah crushed it <laughs> that's what's up dude that is what's up and we'll continue to try you know like one of one of my ideas was uh to always have like at, at the end of legends i used to go with this guy sid and sid has a ha a, a hubbly bubbly collection of, of pipes from afghanistan if you open the book hashish there's pictures in the middle of Rob's book, Hashish. And in those pictures, you'll see these hubbly bubbly pipes, these Afghani pipes that are like, you know, two, three feet tall, big, long pipe on them. And your big bowl on this thing. Like it's a serious hash smoker tool. Like it's a much bigger rip than a dab, even a big dab, even a huge dab. And so, you know, Sid would bring a, one of these down to legends and it would be like a hundred years old and he'd let us all puff on it for the night. So it was this real honor to be able to smoke this pipe from Afghanistan in Amsterdam from Sid's collection. And at the end, I'd, I'd just be trashed, especially because like all the dead smoke in the original restaurant, it was such a small environment. You'd be rebreathing the smoky air, which was terrible. I'd go up to his house and this guy would have like 10 or 15 different types of honey from all around the world and he'd start, you know, have a spoonful of this one. And you just, 
I couldn't believe how well it cleared my throat. And as a hash smoker, I always want to have a honey bar where you can go up and get a little honey and just have access to honey because honey will get your you you back on the dabs like nobody's business. Even if you've got a sore, wretched throat, a, a spoonful of the right honey from the right environment is so medicinal you can't even fuck it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the fucking cut? It was Peruvian honey that he gave me, a tiny teaspoon, and it went down my throat. And I was just like, dude, I feel like I could go do another Legends now, legitimately. So shout out to honey. Well, I wished, uh, you know, I, I knew it was kind of going to play that out this way. I think my email probably went to a lot of people's junk mails and I could have probably done a better job. It would have been nice to have all the other winners as well as Darby and Scott and JP. And uh, maybe we'll do another one here in the near future. I'm good for another little bit. If you guys have anything else you want to talk about in regards to your brands, wh wh where you guys are at with your brands, what you're doing. You know, any of that stuff, you're welcome to mention. You're obviously, towards the end, we'll tell everyone your social media so everyone can follow you. We got a couple hundred people watching in the room and there there should be a, a five or 6,000 people that watch this video. So it'll be worth uh, getting your social medias out there. Anyone? Brand action, activities, sales, where you're so, at, uh, where people uh, can get your product? We can talk about our launch as a brand we are taking vessel life science into new york as a brand and we've got a license there um we're super stoked to to start it in 2024 we've got uh cultivation um and manufacturing extraction so we're stoked man so it's uh it's been a long time coming super important for us and we didn't really intend for Vessel Life Science to become a brand, but I don't think uh, many people intend many things to happen. So we're stoked to to just be a part of the wave and just be a vessel for for what we've been doing. Awesome, dude! Well, congratulations. That's great to hear, man. Thanks, man. Casey yeah, Bun says we we want to know more about Skunk OKC <laughs> turds. <laughs> That's hilarious, yeah. Uh, we just want to shout out to uh, all the patients of Oklahoma. You know, without them, we wouldn't be able to operate and we wouldn't be around. So we really appreciate them, first of all, you know, foremost for, you know, really appreciating good hash. It's like, it's crazy the kind of community that, that's actually like out here. There's a lot of people who generally and like, you know, genuinely care about quality, you know what I mean, over quantity. So I know like there's a lot of booth out here too, but there is, there's actually quite a good market for hash and all that, you know, rosin. A lot of people out here that, you know, take it as a passion. So, yeah, we're, we're real small, you know, it's just my brother and I, and then we have um, one full-time helper and then two part, a, a couple part-time yeah. helpers too. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're just going to keep doing this for Oklahoma as long as we can. And I mean, we'll see what happens. I don't know if it ever goes wreck out here or whatever, but yeah. Um, yeah, just going to keep the slow growth going and keep making hash. Yeah. Well, Oklahoma's lucky to have you guys, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're lucky to have Oklahoma. Yes, too. <laughs> Did you guys do that Donnie Burger cross? The pop Did you burger? Get... Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the one that won the mm -hmm. the first yeah, uh, first place, and... Um, yeah, we you got guys that. did the cross though, or did you get that? No, 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 no we got no, that from no, no. it's a seed, it's a, yeah. uh, it's a pack from California Seed Bank, respect at California Seed oh, Bank. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we just uh, we actually got a couple uh freebies, I think it was like two three pack freebies, and so we just popped all those at once. We pheno hunt everything that we yeah. uh grow, we don't we, we've never taken any cuts. Uh, I think we were just like paranoid years ago that you know, for bugs or whatever reason, and just you know black market stuff kind of wanting to stay hidden or whatever um a decade ago so it's just something and so we just always like to hunt and that was uh the initial time the the, the first pheno hunt wash so it was like five phenos is it five phenos that's in there so um i think it adds to like a, a quite complex flavor same with the rainbow tan that one um that's bloom seed co and we've had that one for 
I don't know, at least a year now, but it's still three phenos and we've narrowed that one down. So a lot of what we do is like mixed pheno of that flavor. We'll keep a couple um, just kind of depending because we want like a nice wide range of flavors, uh, give it a little bit of complexity. So, I mean, that's just what that's what we love doing. And entourage effects. Yeah. Um, well, that's what, yeah, that's what we're just going to keep doing that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I think you're on yeah. the right path. No doubt about it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. We're looking forward to the future. That's for sure. <laughs> yes, We're looking forward to more uh, legends. Then, so yeah, it was an awesome the people. Time. Next time we gotta spend some more time. I was we, I was super overwhelmed with smoking the hash and making sure we got through all those. Yeah, gave, yeah. like you know, like they all said, gave everybody their their due diligence on. It that. does so become work. Fun. It does yeah, become it work where you're really like, holy fuck! Like this is actually like going to take me hours. Yeah. <laughs> By it, far the most dads I've done. Yeah, yeah. It was great though. It was, it was, it was awesome. This is how we do it out in California. Just like yeah, yeah. it's only it's forty five dabs, man. Just get it fucking done. Yeah, we want to do more of that kind of stuff for uh, for Oklahoma. The the competitions out here, man. They're I don't know. But, yeah, but uh, as far as like you know, nice events like that, sessions. We, we're uh, going to throw one called Bluegrass and Hash later this year or next year, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh with one of our buddies so that should be um, just try to bring that well, kind of culture more to oklahoma for the people here well and what what i would suggest you do for that is that um you know we want to do smaller legend styles events in different cities where we can kind of find the talent like scouting events so when we can't if there is events like what you just mentioned that aligns with our sort of bottom line we always are down with finding like the shining stars of these events and then, you know, inviting them into the competition of legends for the next year kind of thing. So we got to be able to scout hash makers out there in the world. And that becomes, uh, you know, the responsibility of the legends of hash crew. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. We'll definitely stay in touch. Uh, and I think Addison might, I, I think he's been talking to our buddy, Brian, that's actually running it. So mm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, he probably That's has. Cool. He's he's on the ball for sure. Yeah, he is. He's a man. <laughs> what about yourself, Cache? Um, yeah. Um I just, you know, I think uh I want to say thank you to, you know, kind of all the supporters we have. We have uh you know, we're blessed to have a decent amount of people that, you know, uh fuck with us and um a big shout out to our growing team. Um, we're all single source. And so, um, we do a lot of breeding. We do a lot of, um, you know, hunting and, um, all of that is extremely difficult and takes a lot of resources and a lot of time. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, this year we're getting into, uh, we're getting like a culture lab and, um, uh, fetish culture. And so, um, that's really exciting. And we have, um, you know, some guys uh, involved that um, are kind of big in the scene and know what they're doing. And so you gotta. Uh, that's the most yeah. important thing you could have said when you said we're going to do a tissue culture lab. I was like, Ooh, that's like very specialized. But then you said the next thing, which was like, we got some guys who really know what they're doing from that exact. That's the most necessary component. Yes. You're doing we, we, uh, a meristemic tissue culture. Um, the the yes, cutting I mean, of the, I, clones the cutting of clones basically really small ones yes and awesome. you know the whole you know uh really clean environment and separate and all that kind of stuff um you know i am not uh i'm personally not the breeder of our team so um that's not like my corner of, of what we do but um the, the guys we have are on our team are, are really you know are, are really good at what they do and I think when you kind of venture out to the like the next level, you definitely have to find, you know, a mentor or somebody who has, you know, shown that they've uh, accomplished it. And um, I mean, we'll see where it goes. Uh, we've done breeding for a lot of years, just the regular way. And um, yeah, I'm excited to uh, kind of make sure our genetics are um, as good as they can be, you know, um, for a long period of time. Cleaning your genetics, man, never a bad thing. And tissue culture yeah. definitely offers that. Huh. Awesome, man. Well, good luck with that. I love it. How about you, Logan? Thank you much. Yeah, so uh, huge shout out to my lab partner, Jesse. Great, gratefully educated on Instagram. Uh, we're, I'm Wolverine Dabs on Instagram. Um, we're launching 
dry sift onto the Washington recreational market here in a few months, actually, with uh, Dog Star and Western Culture. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't been able to find dry sift on the market anywhere, really. Uh, like, you know, you've got your hash wraps and uh, I haven't been able to just find like, you know, full melt dry sift to go buy from a store at anywhere in my area, at least. So it's, it's, uh, it's gonna not be a lot available of fun. in Canada on the legal market. You can now buy full melt bubble, but still dry sift full melt is not available anywhere in our country for sale at a store. Yeah. So it's, it's exciting. I, I'm really excited to actually be able to go into a store and purchase it and see it on the shelves. I'm probably going to be one of the first customers of it. So I guarantee you probably might be the first, second and third, even it's like, people yeah. won't know what it is at first. They'll kind of be like, what the fuck exactly. Is this? It's like, what like is this just some grill? key for, <laughs> yeah. Why is it so expensive? That's always the biggest thing. Yeah. Why, why is this key so expensive? <laughs> Uh, congrats so, man it's funny because yeah, those western cool. culture guys are great yeah no they're amazing so i i love working with them and we're planning on doing multiple collabs throughout the next year so hopefully you know and then we're going to branch into arizona as the next goal and go from there hell yeah dude we'll shout out to you for sure and shout out to my crew in arizona arizona melts i got a team up there or down there making making melts and live hash rosins and they just entered the cannabis cup there and uh yeah they're doing good works they did some really nice strawberry melts shit looked flame on flame on uh what about yourself alex finish you off you can let everyone know where you're at social media and whatnot i think it's almost 11 so this is a perfect time to just kind of mellow it down and uh let everyone go and have a nice sunday afternoon i know i've got some time to spend with my youngin sure some of you guys do as well yeah no doubt guys appreciate you having me today and just shout out all the hash makers who are at legends or working on their craft and trying to make an appearance in in the future i mean uh you guys are all here because you're amazing at what you do and we love we love what we do trying to trying to build a uh, a vessel shout out vessel life science is a vessel for for the hash to uh you know, preserve and make sure that you guys are getting every, every single last piece of that dab. So uh, we, we got some really cool things in the work for 2024. Um, yeah, we, we launched our V2 for square neck glass uh, last year. It was, it was first, first of its kind, but more so uh, an evolution, not a revolution. And I can't share too many specifics, but working with Addison on a debut and some really cool tech at, at the next show. So you know, you guys keep us working hard. Uh, we just want to make the best best package possible. And, you know, it's all possible because of you guys. So congrats, everybody here that placed. Um, and, uh, yeah, appreciate appreciate everybody having me. Awesome, dude. Well, thanks for being here for sure. Thank you guys all for making it out and being the least stoned of the whole bunch. I knew Colin, Colin replied back in like a minute. I'll be there, homie. It's like, fuck, of course, Colin got the email. What are these other people that have never gotten an email from me? Like I'm it's sitting in junk mails right now, like just at the bottom of 176 junk mails. People are going to figure out in a couple hours. No way. Was that already on? It's like, yeah, dude, it's 9 a.m. West Coast time. So I got to shout out all the people uh, watching. We had about 250 people watching live at one point in time. There's still a couple hundred in there now. So we appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out and listening to our, you know, geeked out banter on hash and live hash rosin. Um, shout out to all you hash makers that crushed it so hard. Super proud and excited for each and every one of you. It's no small feat to win a legends of hash when you have that group of connoisseurs the uber uber snobs the ocd snobs of the cannabis world smoking and tasting your hash and then being in agreement with it that it's uh you know some of the best stuff is uh definitely a badge of honor to wear proudly so congratulations to each and every one of you Shout out to my buddy AK Drone Picks who just came into the room up there in Seward, Alaska. Miss you, homie. Hopefully we hit Jamaica soon. And otherwise, uh, of course, as always, I would hope that the full mount blesses your bowl sooner than later. And uh, that's it. Peace out, everyone. Thanks for coming.
Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks for having Hell us, yeah. man. Hell yeah.